Meet the Suzumiyas. Written by John Bob 0008. Narrated by Peter Lucky. Chapter 1. It was yet another typical day in the club room. I was currently strategizing my next move in a game of chess against Koizumi. We were about halfway through the match, and it was clear that I was beginning to gain the upper hand when I had taken out as queen in the previous move. Seriously, it was such a boneheaded move that I half believed he did it on purpose. Why does he like these games so much if he sucks at them? Asahina was busy working on homework from what appeared to be math class. Although, she usually gives the appearance of someone of unexceptional intellect. Watching her complete the problem she was doing seemed to indicate that she was a lot smarter than she let on. I only wish I could do as well at math as she does. Nagato was sitting in her usual corner, reading what appeared to be an old Spanish version of Don Quixote. I began to contemplate as to whether there were any languages that Nagato didn't know. Maybe there were some African or South American tribal languages that she didn't know. There was no doubt that she was familiar with all the popular languages. Finally, my eyes moved towards the front of the room, where our very own brigade commander appeared to be watching something intently on the computer. I assumed it was some kind of video, perhaps a clip from one of those shows that explore haunted houses. However, I was soon corrected when Haruhi let out an exasperated groan. Oh man, I can't believe he failed. I thought for sure he'd win the money. Puzzled by her comment, I decided to open my mouth. What are you watching, a game show? Haruhi raised her eyebrow in my direction. An obvious indicator that I was wrong once again. Of course not. I was watching a show about this supposed psychic that was trying to win that million dollar prize that was being given out by the James Randi Foundation. Ah, now it makes sense. The James Randi Foundation is an organization founded by the world famous skeptic and former magician James Randi. He goes around the world trying to find rational explanations for seemingly phenomenal events. I was a bit of a fan of his until a year ago when I met Haruhi. Anyway, his foundation has this prize that they're holding on to that is worth 1 million US dollars to anyone that can prove under strict laboratory conditions a paranormal phenomenon. This prize has been up for grabs for years, yet not one person has come to claim the prize. This fact has been a bit of a thorn in Haruhi's side, considering the fact that she adamantly wants to find the paranormal. It pisses me off, stated Haruhi. If there really are people with paranormal abilities in this world, why hasn't anyone claimed the prize yet? Well, I can think of three reasons why that would be. One, it could be that there really are no paranormal phenomenon. Two, those with paranormal abilities that could prove themselves are unaware of the prize or are unable to compete for it for reasons beyond their control. Or three, those with paranormal abilities simply do not care to win the prize. Oh, come on, Kion. Do you really think that those are the reasons? I think that maybe they're covering up the truth. I highly doubt that they are. I still stand by my reasons. I know better now that the first choice was not the case. I already know that aliens, time travelers, and Aspers are in fact real. The second choice seems somewhat unlikely as well, as this is a fairly well-known prize and somebody with actual powers would be able to prove themselves eventually. The third choice, given what I know, seemed the most logical. Aliens such as Nagato would hardly be concerned with proving themselves to the world, especially if they're supposed to keep themselves a secret so that they can keep an eye out on Haruhi. The same could be said about Aspers, although their powers would be difficult to prove under laboratory conditions anyway. As for time travelers, proving their existence would likely cause a time paradox, and their powers are the product of radically advanced science and thus don't really count as paranormal anyway. Haruhi then stood up from her chair, a look of defiance pasted on her expression. I hereby declare that the James Randi Foundation is the sworn enemy of the SOS Brigade. I declare war on them. War! 
I highly doubt that JREF is concerned about the actions of a high school pseudo club. Isn't James Randy himself in his 80s? I'm sure he's more concerned about staying alive than anything else. It was then that Koizumi stated check while I was being distracted by Haruhi's nonsense. Damn it, you're not supposed to beat me. Luckily, I was able to rally back and defeat Koizumi later in that match. Soon afterwards, club activities for the day had ended, so we all got up and went home. Today had overall been a pretty relaxing day for the brigade, and I certainly wasn't going to complain. It had been a month since anything weird had happened to us. That weird thing being those data life forms that currently reside inside my cat. The new school year had started without much fanfare, and little seems to have changed other than the fact that we now reside in a different classroom from now on. Before long, we arrived at our usual meeting place and went our separate ways. The trip back home was less than memorable, as I made my way into my front door. I hadn't expected the rest of my day to be anything unusual, but unfortunately, I was wrong. The first thing I had noticed was that my younger sister was in tears while being balled up on the floor. Before I could walk up to her and ask her what was the matter, I was approached by my mother. The next half hour felt completely surreal. I kept trying to convince myself that this wasn't happening and that it was a joke. My mother explained to me that my father was being transferred to an office that would be to the far north, and that we had to move in order for it to be possible for my father to make the trip to and from work. We were going to be moving this Sunday, and I would have to transfer to a new school. We would move in with relatives until we could find a place for us to stay. I kept hearing my sister's pleas to my mother that she didn't want to move and that she liked going to school here. The truth of the matter was that I felt the exact same way. I was really enjoying my life at North High School. I began to think about my classmates Taniguchi and Kunikita, as well as the senior Tsuria. I thought about the SOS Brigade starting from Asahina to Nagato and even Koizumi. Finally, I thought of Haruhi. How would she react to me moving away? No doubt that this was a serious problem. I spent the rest of the day in my room, feeling somewhat sick to my stomach. I knew I had to tell everyone that I was going to be moving, but I couldn't find the will to do it. I guess I'll do it tomorrow. I can only guess as to what was going to happen when I told Hardy the news. Chapter 2 I didn't sleep at all last night, and it definitely showed on my face when I arrived at school this morning. Guess it was all for the better, because my sister never got out of bed this morning either. So if I had fallen asleep, I'd probably never get up. She pretty much was my alarm clock after all. Haruhi was in class before me. She greeted me with her usual mischievous smile, but it quickly disappeared when she noticed the condition I was in. What happened to you? You look like crap. I sighed deeply as I approached my seat. I knew I had to tell Haruhi the truth, but I couldn't bring myself to tell her yet. Nothing, I just couldn't sleep last night. Haruhi let out an exasperated groan. Ugh, you better not be falling asleep in class again today. Your grades are going to suck again this year if you screw around. Don't think I'm going to bail you out again when test time comes. That last time was a freebie, okay? A freebie! She then starts jabbing me with her mechanical pencil. The next time you need my help, it'll cost you. You're going to charge money to me for tutoring? Not that it would be a big deal, I guess. She was a really good tutor. Sadly, this thought brought me back to the realization that there wasn't going to be another time. I was moving soon, and I needed to let the whole brigade know. Strangely enough, the lectures in class were enough of a distraction from my current worries that I quickly fell asleep during class despite Haruhi's warnings. It really wasn't until lunchtime that I was awoken by someone moving my shoulder. I jumped up from the unexpected physical contact, only to find that it was Taniguchi. Whoa, man, you were out cold. Didn't you get any sleep last night? After noticing that Haruhi had already left the classroom, I gathered with Taniguchi and Kunikita for lunch. 
It was then that I began to explain to them that I was moving. What? Are you kidding me? Asked Taniguchi. Wow, I can't believe it. Responded Kunikita. I continued to explain the situation, telling them all the details that I knew, including the fact that I was moving on Sunday. They were quite in shock at my sudden departure. Most of the lunch period was quite somber after that. It was only during that last five minutes that Taniguchi finally spoke up. Have you told Suzumiya yet? Nope. I'll bet she'll take it pretty hard, said Kunikita. I agree, which is exactly why I haven't told her yet. I know it's very cowardly of me to not say anything, but in all honesty, this really wasn't the best time to tell her anyway. Perhaps I'll just let her know when we get to the club room. That way, I could tell the brigade as a whole and get it out of the way. I can't do it. I'm walking my way towards the club room, and I can feel that I'm getting cold feet at the idea of letting everyone know at once. To make matters worse, Haruhi is on cleaning duty, so I'd have to wait for her to get done before I'd let everyone know. I know for a fact that waiting for her would drive me up the wall. I could tell the other three first, but then that would leave me telling Haruhi by herself, and I really, really didn't want to do that. It wasn't long while I was contemplating my options before I reached the door to the club room. After knocking, and being told I could enter, I opened the door to find Nagato, Asahina, and Koizumi already in the room. Did I really walk that slowly today? Asahina was in the middle of brewing tea in her maid outfit. She was the first to notice that I wasn't feeling 100% today. Oh my, Kion, you look terrible today. I'll have your tea ready real soon. Oh, Asahina, you truly are an angel from heaven. I curse my rotten, horrible fortune that this will be the last week that I will ever get to enjoy your wonderful elixirs. I have no idea what I will do with myself not drinking your tea every day. As soon as it was done, Asahina gave my cup to me right away. I thanked her and took my sip. She must have taken extra care this time. It was easily the best tea she has ever brewed in the club room. It almost brought tears to my eyes. If there is a higher being responsible for these turn of events, I must find a way of slaying him, or her for that matter. Koizumi had grabbed the Chinese checkers board and put it on the table. I shook my head at the gesture. I was definitely not in the mood for board games. Well, now I know something must be wrong, said Koizumi. Anything you'd like to tell us? I paused for a few seconds, realizing that there was one person I absolutely had to tell more than anyone else. Actually, there is. Koizumi, could we talk somewhere else? We decided to head up to the roof of the school to talk. After pausing briefly once we got there, I began to explain the entire situation to him. I knew that since he and his organization were directly in charge of ensuring that Haruhi's emotional state remained balanced, telling him this news was going to be of severe importance. After I had finished, I could tell that Koizumi's smile could barely hide the fact that he was quite upset. Whether it was that fact that he was going to miss me or the fact that his life was going to be miserable for the perceivable future, I wasn't sure. Perhaps it was both. I see, spoke Koizumi, who was obviously trying to think of what to say next. This'll definitely be very problematic. I take it you haven't told Suzumiya. I began to stare into the clouds while we were talking. Nope. It is almost certain that this news will put Suzumiya into an unstable emotional state. As you already know, her emotional state is strongly linked around you and your actions. I fear that a catastrophic event might occur the moment she hears the news. I too had already thought of the possibility that such an event could occur. If this had happened maybe eight months ago, it would be certain that the world, no, the entire universe, could be in danger. Somehow I got the feeling that there was at least a small chance that it wouldn't happen that way now. She might get upset, but I don't think she'd want to remake the world over this. At least I hope not. Your trust in Suzumiya is nothing short of amazing. You really think that she won't remake the world upon hearing this news? 
I hate to admit it, but I'm not so convinced myself. I'm a bit envious of you. I don't know why you're so envious of me. You're not the one who's moving. Koizumi chuckled lightly. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Moving is always unpleasant for everyone. No doubt you'll be busy packing for the next few days. Don't remind me. I'm tired enough as it is. The last thing I want to hear is about all the hard work I'm going to have to do all the way into Sunday. Koizumi began walking towards the door. We better head back down. I'm sure Suzumiya is in the club room by now, and I'd hate to have her wonder what we were up to. We headed downstairs and back into the club room. Sure enough, Haruhi was already there sitting at her computer monitor. She raised her head and gave us a look of annoyance. Where the hell have you two been? Mikiru told me you two were talking about something. What was it about? I wasn't ready to tell Haruhi just yet. I just couldn't. Damn, I'm such a coward. Don't worry about it. It was only boy stuff. She gave me a look of suspicion before looking at Koizumi. He merely gave a weak smile and shrugged. Satisfied with his response, she brought her eyes back to the computer monitor. Whatever. The rest of the day in the club room was nothing too special. I spent the rest of my time there sleeping. I began to wonder how long it would take before I would finally catch up on my sleep debt. When I finally got home, I found that my mother had already begun the beginning stages of packing. My sister was nowhere in sight. She must still be hiding in her room, crying her eyes out. I entered my room to find Shamisen sleeping at the foot of my bed. Ah, what it must be like to be blissfully ignorant of what's happening around you. At least you don't get to do any work when we move. Since I didn't feel the motivation to do any packing, I lied down on my bed and stared at the ceiling. I have no idea how I'm going to break the news to the others. I never did get around to telling Nagato or Asahina, let alone Haruhi. I kept thinking it over for more than an hour before I finally got sick of thinking about it and grabbed my cell phone. I made the decision to call Asahina first. She picked up the phone after only a couple rings. Asahina, it's me. Kyan, what's wrong? She sounded as if she already knew why I'm calling. Then again, I doubted my voice did much to hide the fact that I had something troubling me. I looked like a wreck all day for a reason. I began to explain what was happening to me, about the fact that I was moving, and that I would be gone by this Sunday. She listened carefully to everything I had to say, and when I was finished, her silence seemed a definite sign that she was shocked about it. I, I see. I'm really sorry that this is happening so suddenly. I should have told you in person. Her voice suddenly brightened up, as if trying to cheer me up. It's okay, Kion. I'm sure everything will work out. There's nothing to be sorry about. Oh, Asahina, you truly must be a saint for you to be able to hear this saddening news and try to cheer me up instead of yourself. You really don't need to be so selfless. Have you told Suzumiya? I'm afraid to. You'll be okay. Just be sure to tell her soon, okay? I hung up with her shortly afterwards. I can only imagine that she would be crying herself to sleep tonight. Poor, poor Asahina. I'm so sorry. I dialed Nagato's number next. It rang three times before it was answered. There was no response on the other side, but I knew she was on the line. Nagato, it's me. She didn't answer back, but I had decided to continue to talk anyway. There's something I need to talk to you about. I see. I began to tell her the exact same thing I told Asahina only minutes earlier. When I was finished, I waited for her response with bated breath. I see. It was difficult to pick up, but after knowing Nagato for as long as I have, I had learned her mannerism and have mastered picking up on the subtle changes in her expressions and tone when she spoke. She was saddened by the news. Poor Nagato. Only a few months back, he remade the world in order to give me the chance to live a typical, normal life. And despite all that, and the fact that I ultimately decided to return the world to its previous state, I'm now going to be moving away. 
I get the feeling that it was all a waste in the end, wasn't it? I've told everyone except Haruhi. To be honest, I'm having a hard time finding the courage to tell her. You need to inform her of this matter soon. I was surprised by her response. She continued to speak. The sooner you inform her, the less difficult it will be for her to adjust to this event. After finally letting it sink in, I realized that she was right. She's always right. It would be a cold day in hell when Nagato had her facts wrong. She's also come a long way since her old super introverted self a year ago. She wouldn't have been so open with advice in the past. Okay, take care Nagato. See you tomorrow. Bye. I had finally hung up on Nagato after that. I began staring at the phone as I reflected over the events of the last year. There were some crazy times. Almost being killed by Asakura, twice. Solving the murder on the island. Being stuck in a nearly endless time loop during summer vacation. The crazy movie we made. The strange mansion that we got stuck in. Not to mention the world being recreated by Nagato. If I had anything to say about all those events, the truth was that they were the best moments of my entire life. It seems like my entire life was an adventure. I mean, sure, it was nice to have a break in between those events every once in a while, but I wouldn't trade in those memories for all the yen in all of Japan. And now it was coming to an end. I opened the phone and began to dial Haruhi's number. By now, I had her number completely memorized. Despite this, it took an eternity to press each button. I stared down at the send button after pressing the last number. Just one more button push and I'll be on my way to getting the worst part of this moving over. I just need to tell Haruhi and be done with it. I couldn't do it. I closed the phone and tossed it on the floor before laying back to get some sleep. I'll tell her in person tomorrow. I know it's not what I wanted to do in the first place, but it's better that way. I was up for most of the night again. It took every last bit of willpower in my body to get up when the alarm went off. I haven't been this tired in a long time. I know for a fact that I'd be spending more of today sleeping in class again. Walking up the hill was a nightmare today, especially since it was really warm. I arrived before Haruhi this time and immediately sat down at my desk and laid my head down to sleep. It didn't take long before I started to doze off. I never even noticed Haruhi walking into the class. It was only when I felt a pen jab into my shoulder was her existence made known to me. I jumped up and turned to her angrily. Ow, what the hell? She stared daggers back at me. Don't tell me you didn't get any sleep again. What the hell is wrong with you? I turned away from her and laid my head back down. Nothing. She went and kicked my chair. Liar! Something's up! What's with you lately? Even though I knew I had to tell her the truth eventually, I didn't want to be in the middle of class. I was mentally kicking myself for my procrastination, but it wasn't enough to change my mind. I don't want to talk about it. I heard her snort in irritation. She left me alone for a few minutes though, before she finally shook my shoulder. Damn it, leave me alone! I looked up at her and saw her hand held out. Let me take you to the nurse's office. Since you're going to sleep anyway, you may as well do it on a bed. I reluctantly took up her offer and took her hand. We began to walk to the nurse's office. Haruhi told the nurse that I wasn't feeling well and I needed to rest. I lied down on one of the beds there and began to rest. Haruhi sat by my bedside for a few minutes, watching me. It really made me nervous having her stare at me like that. Go away, damn it. You know, as brigade leader, it, it is my responsibility to ensure the well-being of all of my brigade members. I like to believe that my members can talk to me about anything. So when I see that something is bothering one of my members, it's frustrating when that member refuses to talk to me about it. She moved her face closer towards mine. Close enough that it was making me a bit uncomfortable. Her face, no matter what expression it wore, was truly a thing of astounding beauty. 
This made the fact that she was moving so close all the more uncomfortable. She spoke once more. Are you absolutely certain you don't want to talk to me about it? I rolled over and said nothing. I heard her give a long sigh. I could hear her get up from her chair. I'm going back to class. She paused for a minute before she finally walked away. I spent the next couple hours sleeping. When I woke up, it was almost lunchtime. I finally got up and went back to class. The lunch bell rang just before I got there. I saw Haruhi exit the classroom and began heading towards me. She paused briefly while looking at me before walking past me. She looked upset. Was she mad at me for not talking to her? I really need to come clean with her soon. I took a deep sigh and walked into the classroom to eat lunch. Taniguchi wasted no time prying into my business. Dude, Suzumiya looked pissed all morning. What did you do? Did you tell her you were moving? I shook my head. What are you waiting on? Just tell her already. That's easy for you to say, but this is a lot more complicated than it seems. I know she's going to be upset. I really don't want to be the bearer of bad news. Taniguchi punched my arm. Damn it, dude. Stop being so selfish. You're not doing it for her sake. Since when did you care about how I treated Haruhi? And I know that I'm being a bit selfish. Leave me alone about it. Kunikita finally spoke up. We don't need to argue and fight. We should make Hyun's last week here as enjoyable as possible. Let's just eat and relax. I appreciate it. I'll figure out what to do later. I still haven't figured out what to do. I'm in the club room now with my head resting on my arms. I could definitely feel the energy in the room had dropped about tenfold from what it was yesterday. Koizumi had the chessboard out and was playing by himself, but you could see an obvious amount of melancholy on his face. Nagato was still in her corner reading, but I could sense that she was reading at a pace far slower than what was normal for her. She even turned the pages slower than normal. Haruhi wasn't sad, but she was anything but her usual perky, energy-filled self. I noticed that she would occasionally glance at me for a few seconds, as if doing so might give her some insight as to what my condition was. Strangely enough, there was only one exception to all this, Asahina. Asahina seemed like her perfectly normal self. I'd expected her to be in the same condition I was in, but she barely seemed upset at all. Was she oblivious to what was happening? Did she not understand what I told her last night? Or maybe she doesn't really care. What the hell? She better care, damn it. Never mind that, I still need to tell Haruhi the truth. The fact of the matter is, I've been mulling it over for the last hour. Should I do what I did with Koizumi and take her to the roof and tell her? No thanks. Maybe I should tell her on the way home. No way. N should I call her tonight? I know that's not going to happen. No matter what idea I came up with in my mind, my mind immediately responded by rejecting it. Could I have Koizumi tell her? No, definitely not. Leave a note, cowardly. How about I just not say anything and keep her in the dark? That would be low. I began to mentally pull on the hair on my head. This sucks so freaking bad. Eventually, the day ended and everyone began to walk towards our usual meeting place where we would eventually split off on our separate ways. Koizumi kept pace with me and began talking to me. I take it Suzumiya still doesn't know. Yeah, was all I could respond with. I wasn't really sure what else to say. She's become deeply concerned about your condition. She may appear angry, but she's actually quite worried. You really should just get it over with. I know, I know, shut up already. Of course, perhaps my organization could do something to prevent. No, I yelled. It's bad enough I'm involved with your organization. I'd like to keep my family out of it as much as possible. Very well. Our conversation drifted off after that. It wasn't long before we finally arrived at the meeting place. We all went our separate ways and went home. I cursed myself for once again procrastinating on telling Haruhi. It was now Wednesday. That meant that I only had three days to finally tell her. I really needed to man up already and just tell her. Consequences be damned. 
It was when I started getting close to where I left my bike when I noticed the sound of footsteps behind me. I got the feeling that it might have been Koizumi wanting to discuss something, so I turned around to see what he wanted. I was wrong. It was Haruhi. She paused briefly when she saw me turn around before she marched up to me. She came close enough that she was practically in my face. I demand that you tell me what is going on. No more excuses. I turned my head away in nervousness. However, she pulled onto my tie and brought my face within a mere centimeter from hers. I could feel her breath on my face. My heart was pounding like crazy. And no, it wasn't because I was scared, okay? You're not getting away from this, Kion. I'll follow you all the way to your home if I have to. And don't think about running either. You know you can't outrun me. As true as that is, even if I wanted to run, it wasn't possible since you're holding onto my tie. She narrowed her eyes and pressed her forehead against mine. She held out onto my tie like a vice grip. Just how strong is she anyway? Tell me. I finally relented. Okay, okay, I will. Just let go. She finally let go. I stammered back a couple steps and tried to regain my composure. I began to stumble along with my words. Well, uh, you see... Well, go ahead and spit it out. I finally took a deep breath, collected my thoughts, and began speaking. Well, the truth is I've been upset the last few days because... I took another deep breath before finishing. I'm moving. 